<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And now, cough, cough, cough. This is the beginning of the bit. Cough, cough, cough. And now, kids and kid Jelinas, it's time once again to get out your trapper keepers and your ink and your quills and your draxes and your groots as well. Yes. Did you see what I did there? Did you yes, see what I did, I did there? Did you catch that? Okay. So I thought that was really good. Dude, when are we going to do Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Oh, I don't know. When are we going to do? Have you okay. seen it? Because, oh yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I was, I was, I was impressed. I was impressed by it. Just, just the soundtrack alone. Jesus, it's freaking wonderful. Yeah. Um, it, it, we have to see it because it, it, one of the end credit sequences introduces a character that I've been waiting for. Oh, yeah? Yes, a very important character. That, and it's one of those things where they say the name of the character, and the entire audience is silent except for me and like three or four nerds in the back that just go, <laughs> Ooh! but everybody else has no idea what the hell they're talking about. The whole theater is full of people going, "Huh?" You you all should have made note of each other and and met in the oh, lobby. I I knew, who, I, I knew instantly who said it because there were some very overweight people in um, uh, trench coats. Ah. Overweight dudes in trench coats and glasses. And I'm, okay. I'm okay, in Colorado, that. man. Overweight dudes. A anybody in a trench coat, I leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trench coats are not safe yeah. around here. <laughs> imagine. Yeah. So guess what, Bunny? It's... Homework time once again on the big show. Yes. Well, it's the big show. <laughs> well, it's the big bad show tonight. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. I beg of you, please put down your memes for one second, internet. <laughs> Every week on this podcast, The Pope on Film, we assign homework to our vaguely loyal listeners in the hopes of bettering people, nay, society at large. Yes. And this week's homework assignment comes to us from, of all places, Bloomberg Business Week magazine, because I am fucking old now. <laughs> the article... From Bloomberg Business Week magazine is entitled Disney's Galactic Gambit. Can Disney steal back the magic from Universal and Harry Potter? Yeah. And it's a really great article, uh, despite the fact that it really does seem obsessed with describing how handsome guys look. Yes. For an article in Bloomberg Business Week, it does seem to have a lot of his earrings look beautiful. Yeah, it was it was glistening it was just in the sun. Too descriptive for me. Too let me paint the scene. No, just tell yeah. me the fucking story. I've got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was it's reading I, I, there's also something up with Johnny Depp. I don't know what it is. I started reading the article. That was coming from Variety, I think. And it was the same thing. It was like, and his two agents getting into their BMW, listening in the sun <laughs> as they race to Johnny Depp. And, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm fucking done with this article. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a great article. It's great because it shows a desperate Disney corporation playing catch up. And there's something really like a uh, shot in Freud about that, you know? Yeah. It's one of the most powerful corporations in the, in the universe and the originator of the modern theme park. And now they're struggling to attract visitors to their goddamn theme parks. Ha yeah. that's for closing down pirate world. You sons of bitches. Okay. But here is my question here. Okay. You want to get you want to get back up Hold on. on. 
That was a pirate world shout out. I don't know if that's happened within the last 40 years. <laughs> I want to point out the, the gravitas of that situation. Episode 105, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Yes. Never forget. Never. <laughs> Never forget. Never forget. But, Never. But I will watch that again this Christmas. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. That's that. Yeah. No, I'll watch the shit out of that. Uh, so, yes, you were saying, buddy? Uh, what was I saying? I have no idea. For our new listeners or possibly viewers, I am often stoned during this show. By the way. Um, what was I? Okay, yeah. Uh, Disney. So, why are they going with Avatar? And what's the other one they're going with? Star Wars, Star I Wars. think. Okay, I can kind of see Star Wars, but you've got all of the Universal characters, uh, no, the Marvel there's... characters. Yeah, you've got uh, large, fuck large... Avatar. Do a Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, they are doing a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. They're actually taking down the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Yeah, turning that into a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Yeah. That might be interesting. And also, you go on the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, and you're the only person who knows anything about the Twilight Zone. <laughs> you know? Like I, I go on the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, and I go, oh my god, that's the tiny robot from from the one episode where, and like, no one else knows what the fuck I'm talking about. With no Endora the Witch. Twilight Zone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're going through and you can see on a shelf like a broken pair of glasses. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's fucking Burgess Meredith. <laughs> Burgess Meredith. He, 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 he's the only person left on the planet and his glasses break. There was time now. Like, I'm the only person who gets these things because no one else knows fucking Twilight Zone like I do. So, so I'm glad. I loved the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. And I'm also glad it's gone because no one else knows that. No one knows Twi Twilight Zone. It's yeah. a bit ridiculous. Like, why don't you have Gilligan's Island the ride? He, it, and that just reminded me, uh, uh, there was a thing on Facebook that I had reposted because I found it so funny and interesting. Uh, there was this kid, apparently he was doing a, a YouTube vlog or something like that because the camera was dead on him. And it looks like he finished up whatever he was doing. He, ha he had a pencil in his hand, he flipped it, and it landed on the eraser and stayed. And the kid just, the, the look of surprise and shock and awe on the kid's face. And the first thing I thought is, he is going to have psychic powers the rest of the day. Nice. Very nice. I mean, what else? <laughs> yeah. So the gist of the article is basically this. For decades, Disney has been number one in theme parks. They've been the number one in theme parks. Universal has been trying, though, for decades to to knock Disney down from the number one theme park world. Yeah. And they've tried really hard. Their Jurassic Park ride is really fucking cool. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's really, really good. And you're on a boat and it's, it's really nice. I really like it. And then they had a really cool Back to the Future ride, which closed down way before its time. Like it, the ride's not even around anymore. Uh, Universal Studios is much uh, quicker to take rides down and put up something new. Yeah. So they also have a new Despicable Me ride in Florida. It, 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 they, they, they're going all out. Uh, with Despicable Me, and, and they also go really hardcore every Halloween in a way that Disney never could. Yeah, like they go all out. One of the things I like doing in October, in September and October, is going on YouTube and seeing videos of what Universal Studios is doing, because they always go just so balls out. For like two years now, too, they've done uh, purge zones. Purge zones. Yeah, purge zones at Universal Studios. So you're just walking through the back lot, and surrounding you are purge people with the masks on and bats and <laughs> machine guns and, and and fake and fake murders happening all around you. It's pretty awesome if you know the purge. You know, it's pretty cool. That sounds fun. Uh, I, last was it 
that last year, I think it was last year, they did a um they did like a Mike Myers haunted house where you're walking through like the history of Mike Myers and there's one, one room where it's like a it's like a mirror maze except yeah. surrounding you like 50 different fake uh Mike Myers life-size statues and one of them is real and will jump out at you. Yeah. And it changes each time you go uh you go through the ride. So you're not sure which Mike Myers is going to be the real one that scares the shit out of you. <laughs> so that that's I really I really like what they do during uh Halloween. And in Florida in Universal Studios Florida, they've built a, a, a an accurate a 100% accurate well as much as you can be accurate replica of Springfield from the Simpsons. Oh, okay. So you can go to uh, the Quickie Mart, and you can you can actually drink a Duff beer at Moe's, and it, it looks really cool. <laughs> There's also one part of Universal Studios Florida that I would probably like the most, more so than frickin' Harry Potter World, and that's their Marvel Islands of Adventure. Yeah. Have a whole Marvel comic book theme park that's already in Universal Studios. Because this, because they yeah, built I knew that. Somebody had. They, they, yeah, they built it before Disney owned Marvel. Oh. Okay. So there's there's a part, so there's a part of Disney that's like, hey, we could build like Marvel Land, but that's already been done by fucking Universal Studios Florida. So it's weird that now they're working on Marvel comic book rides for Disney World, but there are already Marvel comic book rides at Universal Studios. So it's a bit weird. Yeah. It's a bit weird, but. Honestly, imagine what would Maxwell do? <laughs> We're in Universal Studios and he's like, oh, hey, there's the Simpsons. That's cool. Oh, my God. Hey, look, there's uh, Despicable Me. There's the Minions. Oh, how cute. And then suddenly Dr. Doom is in front of him. Yeah. Like, what would Maxwell do? He would freak the fuck out. <laughs> I would have to teach Maxwell not to punch people. Because yeah. literally, what if we're like walking and, and suddenly my son sees that the green goblin's in front of him? Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, Maxwell, stop hitting him. Stop hitting him. Mm -hmm. Maxwell, don't hit people in the crotch. But it was Dr. Octopus. I don't care. Just stop punching people. <laughs> it would be amazing. It would be amazing. That's exactly what he would do. <laughs> we're just walking around, suddenly Magneto's in front of him. He's going to lose his shit. <laughs> could totally lose it. So the story goes, and I didn't know this, that J.K. Rowling and Warner Brothers gave offers to both Universal Studios and Disney oh. about having a Harry Potter theme park. And both of the companies wanted to build a Harry Potter theme park. But J.K. Rowling insisted that she have final say in everything. And that's when Disney tapped out because they don't play well with others. Yeah. So so is so Disney could have had this, and that's got and that's, that also makes it wonderful. And it looks like Disney was right in the sense that, uh, according to the article, J.K. Rowling was a bit of an overbearing, demanding bitch. Mm -hmm. But thank God she was, because if she wasn't there, if she didn't have final say, then it would have been horrible. They wanted to sell pizza and hot dogs. But uh, I'm telling you, if I, was, to... if I was Disney, I would snap Guardians. Galaxy up. That's what oh, I yeah. would do. I mean, but Star yeah, Wars it, is cool, and you're going to get your diehard fans most definitely. You know, but if I have my choice, like I'm, I'm there for a few hours or whatever, and I have my choice between going to like Star Wars land or Guardian of the Galaxy land, I'm going to Guardian of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, one of my favorite parts of the article is when they when they talk about how Coke, Coca-Cola, has a contract that Coke is to be sold everywhere throughout Universal Studios. And J.K. Rowling's like, nope. Uh -huh. Nope. That, that's not happening. You're not selling Coke in my theme park. It's fucking Harry Potter. You can't get go buy a freaking Coke at Hogwarts. It's not happening. You're not doing that. Yeah. And so they had a big fight about it. But yeah, you can't get a Coke at Harry Potter World, so that's, I thought that was funny. So, 
Yeah, they would have ruined it. I, I also especially like the part that the, the people who are trying to build Potterland or whatever are like, this is not possible. There's no right angles in Diagon Alley. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, we can't build this. It's impossible. We cannot do this. <laughs> so after a lot of wrestling um, by uni- between Universal Studios and J.K. Rowling, Universal Studios Florida opens up the World of Harry Potter Experience within their theme park. So they have a theme park within their theme park. You have to actually pay. Like, you pay to get into Universal Studios. You have to pay a second ticket to get into Harry Potter. Yeah. So suddenly, after that, Universal is winning the theme park war and Disney is struggling. And as much as I love Disney, there's something just fucking great about that. (laughs) There's just something great about the biggest company in the world saying, yeah, you be number two for a while. You mm-hmm. stay there for a bit. Yeah. You in the corner and think about what you've done. You're getting a timeout. So now Disney parks are struggling. They know that they desperately need a fully immersive attraction like Harry Potter World. So they're putting a crazy amount of fucking money on two fully immersible fantasy worlds. Two of them. Yes. And both of them have some pretty big glaring problems we'll get to star wars but number one avatar land that's not what it's going to be called but avatar land avatar land that and does I've not been ta- sound like a good choice this fuck this whole fucking week i've been talking about avatar i've been obsessed with avatar i've been reading about avatar and studying about avatar and avatar to me is so fucking incredible so amazing so exciting because uh, it's it, it, it's the number one highest grossing movie in the history of humanity. Yeah. It it it, it was also number the number one movie for longer than any other movie was number one. It broke records. It broke all the records, all the box office records. Yeah. It was a huge, massive, massive hit. And yet, no one remembers a fucking thing from that movie. Yeah. That should not be possible. I don't know how that's possible. Everyone saw the movie. Everyone saw Avatar. I saw it in the theater, I think, three times. And then I got it on DVD, and I saw it a couple more times. And yet, I had no fucking idea what the movie was about. I don't remember a thing. It's like some sort of, like, a like a, like a a time warp or a, yeah. a time misplacement. Like, some inceptioned the memory of the movie Avatar out of my head. <laughs> Someone went into my dreams and removed the memory of this film from me and everyone else. I have a a rudimentary memory of it. I remember Sigourney Weaver's yeah. in there. I remember yeah. this was some kind of military thing. Yeah. That and and blue cat people. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. So Avatar Land, when they announced Avatar Land, I thought, this is so exciting news for people in 2009. Yeah. But not now. James Cameron is still a long-ass way away from filming the supposed sequel, and people don't remember fucking Frame 1 from uh, Blue Dances with Wolves. (laughs) I I see this... I see... See this being a good idea on paper. Disney says, we need a fully immersible world. Let's go to a successful film. This is the most successful film of all time. So it stands to reason on on paper that if we make a fully immersible world on this, the biggest movie in existence, Mm -hmm. that this will be a big hit. But no one fucking remembers until James Cameron gets off his ass and films Avatar 2 through 9 or whatever the fuck he's doing, then... This film seems like a ridiculously bad fucking idea. Well, you know... It, Ridiculous. See, now if you got a day or a weekend to wander around, I, I could see it being really worthwhile walking through. I bet it would be fucking god gorgeous, you know? Yeah, like yeah. Just a, a, an amazingly different place to walk around and interact with. But you're not going to get people lining up you to, at your doors to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when people were getting Avatar Depression? You remember that? Avatar Depression? 
Yeah, it was a thing, and they reported about it on the news a lot because the 3D was so amazing and immersive, immersible when you when you saw the film and you saw it in 3D. It was so amazing and breathtaking yeah. that people would get depressed when they left the theater because they wanted to stay in that Avatar world. And it was Avatar depression, and it was an actual thing that people felt because the movie felt so real. <laughs> to be fair, though, that sounds ridiculous now, but I felt the same way when I saw Debbie Does Dallas. Yes. I got Debbie Does Dallas depression after that because I just wanted to stay there with those horny cheerleaders in the shower. <laughs> so Avatar Land sounds like a ridiculous, ridiculously bad fucking idea. And here's some proof. It's trivia time. Trivia time. Okay. James Cameron and Disney want you to believe that Avatar is the next freaking Star Wars. After all, it was the number one highest grossing film in the history of existence, and basically everyone has seen it. Most people have seen it numerous times. So this is a game of basic yes. Avatar trivia. Basic Avatar trivia. Trivia. As it happens, your local bookstore has a Avatar coffee table book in its bargain department. So all of these questions came from the back of the book. It didn't even open the book. It came from the back of the freaking book. Okay. Basic Avatar oh, no. trivia. Guys, guys, no fighting. Be nice. Maxwell, what happened? No, what happened? No, 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 no. Bella's not. Because the time he says I get to watch five videos and I have to give the TV straight back to him, even though he's been watching it for a while. Maxwell, you've been watching TV for a while. Let your sister have a turn. Well, I, I just watch well, five videos at first just didn't let me do that. It's it's okay, Maxwell. It will be okay. I I promise you. So basic Avatar trivia. And it's funny because I've been talk, trying to talk to a lot of people about Avatar yeah. over this past week. And every time I every time I do, no matter who I'm talking to, whether it's my wife, whether it's Emerald, whether it's my boss, whether it's a, a co-worker, whether it's someone I know, every time I try and talk about Avatar to them, they say, okay, which Avatar? And I'm like, <laughs> fucking the blue one, the blue people, the blue people Avatar. Mm-hmm. So this is basic Avatar trivia. Basic, basic Avatar trivia that should be easy for everyone since this is the number one movie in the history of existence. So let's freaking do this. Number one, how many light years away is Pandora from Earth? 36. 37. 4.4 uh, light years away from Earth. Okay. Yeah, and this is from that's, the back of the book. I didn't even open the book up. That's really close. That's put it. That's put it. Puts it at Alpha Centauri. I don't know. I don't know. Approximately how tall are most Navi, which are the the blue alien guys? Approximately how tall are they? Uh, they are about eight foot, I think. Mm, ten feet. Ten feet. Definitely ten feet tall. Here's a basic yeah, but one. you know they're bragging. Yeah. Here's here here's a basic one. Here's a basic one. What is the hero's name? The oh. hero, the star of the film, the 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 your 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 protagonist. He's centered. He's the entire film. He's he's <laughs> watch the star, the freaking hero. What's his name? I mean, you gotta guess. You don't gotta guess. Uh, I, I'm gonna go with Marty. <laughs> His name is Jake Sully. What? Okay. Here's a true or false one to make it easier. Uh, uh, Sigourney Weaver plays Doctor Veronica Cartwright. True or false? True. That is yeah. false. Veronica Cartwright is a name from an a of an actress from the movie Alien. Yes, but I was just thinking that it would be better played by Angela Cartwright <laughs> and Sigourney Weaver. 
she so I'm like uh, yeah so so here's an extra point what is Sigourney Weaver's character's name uh Zool her name and this is a horrible name this is a freaking horrible name Dr. Grace Augustine <laughs> like holy crap that sounds fake that sounds fake I know we're watching a, we're talking about a movie of giant blue aliens, but yeah. that name sounds fake. <laughs> name the evil corporation that is trying to mine unobtainium. Unobtainium. <laughs> unobtainium. Name the evil corporation that wants to mine for unobtainium. This is the only. This is the only one I know. Exxon. And that's because I have a. Uh, no, close. Okay. The RDA, which stands for the Research Development Administration, so goddamn generic. Yes. I only know that because I have a sticker for the Research Development Administration on my car. <laughs> and it's like one day someone's going to get the fact that that the sticker I have on my car is from the bad guys from Avatar. Oh, wait, no one's ever going to know that because no one knows that goddamn movie. <laughs> No one's ever going to get that I have a sticker from the Research Development Administration. No one's ever going to get that. Ever. I'm, I'm going to yes, predict. Maxwell? What did you say, Maxwell? Can you try to get this out? Uh, no, I can't seem to get it out, Maxwell. It might be stuck. We'll have to, we'll have to call 911. I'll have to call the president. So I I, I'm legitimate. I'm legitimate. I predict in twenty yeah. years this is gonna this is gonna have a huge resurgence. I I I don't know because I know I it played with, uh, fucking nearly nonstop on HBO. They had a television at work that would play like HBO and shit. I don't know why, and it was like always on. Avatar, just constantly Avatar. <laughs> So there's going to be a whole generation that we don't know about now and possibly should exterminate who are going to grow up and start pronouncing their love for Avatar and what Avatar meant to them, you know. I like that. That's yeah. <clears throat> I remember but his it, but his point is still solid that you can't remember the main character's name. Um, it, yeah. That's not unusual for me. That movie. I don't remember the main characters' names of most movies. So, so Avatar is basically spaghetti water. Oh. Yeah. You know, you yeah. make a big pot of spaghetti, put the colander in the sink, dump it, you know? So for that one second, you were fully full of Avatar, and then it all just starts draining away. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be possible. It shouldn't be possible for people to have so little knowledge of such a massive movie. Yes, it should not be possible. So yeah, Disney's putting a, a, so much on Avatar's shoulders. It really does seem like a bad idea. And like I said last week, it's the Miami Vice stunt show spectacular all over again. <laughs> it's basically, what this is. Yes, Maxwell. Oh, there's a special guest. There's a special guest on the show. Okay, who is the special guest? Shredder. Shredder? You've got to put him up. The camera is up there where the white light is. There you go. Yeah. Hi, Shredder. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, so, do you shred paper? No. Do you shred important documents? No. I, I tried like into the Ninja Turtle. You try and break into the Ninja Turtles? No, I try and break into their... Into their sewer? Their lair? Yeah. Okay, because if you're breaking into the Ninja Turtles, you're we're getting into some cannibal holocaust territory here, Maxwell. Yeah. You're going to need to wear a so, mask. Yeah. We found his mask. We found his mask. Where's his mask, Maxwell? Where's your toy's mask? It's okay. You don't have to find it now. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack made of needles. Is is what it is to find anything in your room. Okay, thank you for being on the show, Trevor. Thank you so much for being on. The show. 
So, um, like I said, Disney is working on two fully immersible fantasy worlds, which brings us to the second uh, fully immersible oh. fantasy world. And that is Star Wars Land. And I know, I know that that sounds so exciting. Yeah. Hey, you get to meet Chewbacca, and you get to fight Darth Vader and pilot the Millennium Falcon and maybe build a lightsaber and yada, yada, yada. Basically, it's the Harry Potter experience, but with Star Wars. It sounds so completely awesome that my inner child's dick just exploded. <laughs> just... But... But, I hate to be a, a Debbie Downer here, but uh, Bunsen Addy. Yes. We do me the honors and venture a guess as to which of the many Star Wars planets will be the destination for Disney's upcoming Star Wars land. I'm going to go with, I what the hell was the name of it? Coruscant, I believe. What was the main city? in the prequels. That oh, one. Hold on, we're, we're talking about Star Wars. So Coruscant, yeah. like the big filling city that that's just all massive buildings and that's yeah. and everything. Yeah. Well, Disney has announced, there's a lot of different things that it could be. You could have Coruscant, you could have Tatooine and Mos Eisley Spaceport and all of that. You could you could maybe even have like different planets, like you like this part is hot, then you can have you can have it be all cold and fake snow, and yeah. this can be like Dagobah and all swampy and stuff like that. There's a bunch of things that you can do. There's a bunch of things that you can do with that. Well. Disney has announced that Star Wars Land will be set in a brand new, never before seen alien planet. Brilliant what? move. <laughs> and I say no. I freaking scream BS on this. Yeah. Imagine Universal Studios. Imagine Universal Studios saying, yeah, you guys don't want to go to Hogwarts, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean. Are you really alien? That's. I mean, no, Max, well, we're talking about a, a theme park. You guys don't want to go to Hogwarts. That's in all the books and the movies. You don't want that. That's why we've created our own wizarding school. Yeah. Yeah. Schmechterdorf. <laughs> you kids are going to love going to school at Schmechterdorf. <laughs> you have the whole goddamn Star Wars universe to play with. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And I feel I gotta feel like this is another bad decision. No one wants to go to to Schmechterdorf School of, of I Wizards. I do. And located I, Tucson, Arizona. And I'm sure I am not the only one out there, but like Star Wars has not has not earned it back for me yet. It's taken me a really long time, like a year and a half, to finally get to this decision. I did not like The Force Awakens. I, I didn't really care about The Force Awakens, and I, I wasn't particularly thrilled with Rogue One either. This is why I was Where's wasn't... the fucking fun? The Where problem... is the goddamn fun? The first three movies were chock full of fun. You had the fucking... You had the robots sniping back and forth at each other through the whole thing. You had Han Solo being a wise ass. You know, they were fun movies. The problem... The problem that I have with The Force Awakens is that what made Star Wars great was that it was a self-contained film. Yeah. You could just watch it. But The Force Awakens is a film where they are never going to stop making Star Wars movies. So that means let's make The Force Awakens as vague as possible. Let's yeah. Not, let's not tie together any plot. Let's not keep any... Let's not end any plots. Let's not explain anything. Let's just make it as vague as possible. Let's not explain who this person is, who that person is. Let's not explain what's going on here. Let's yeah. just get with this person, add all these new people. Don't explain their backstory because we're going to be making these films until the day you die. And then we're going to keep making them. So none of these movies are going to be as self-contained and, and fun as the last, as uh, the first Star Wars movie. Yeah. So that just kind of that just kind of pissed me off. That pisses me off. 
And also, I'm sorry, but I'm never going to take the fat guy from Heroes seriously. <laughs> I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to take the fat guy from Heroes seriously, period. Yeah. Stop trying to pass him off as a legitimate person. It's not happening. You're from freaking Heroes. Yeah. No! Maxwell, stop covering up the camera. And and okay. that's and that is just who he is. He's just the guy from Heroes. Yeah. He was a. We went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy two, and he had this bid in the beginning where he's talking to film students and stuff, like in those stupid videos they show in the beginning yeah. of uh, movies and stuff. And I'm like, what? What the hell? Am I supposed to take the fat guy from Heroes seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Like, why the hell is the fat guy from Heroes here? And I'm like, he was in Star Wars. He was in the people are trying to pass him off as someone legitimate now. Really freaking weird. I don't know. I, I tend to feel more like Oh, I'm glad you got a job. You know, I'm yeah. glad you work it. No, no, no. You're doing a a PSA in front of a movie, you know. You haven't sunk too low yet. It's okay. You should be proud. You should be proud. You're helping to educate children. Okay? My little buckaroo. I was hoping I was hoping if you're gonna get the fat guy from Heroes in Star Wars, he had better be Porkin's son. Yeah. Son of Porkins. Son of Porkins. <laughs> Yes, Maxwell. What? We get to the guest. Oh, there's another guest. Okay, there's another guest on the show. Who? Who, who is this? Who is this guest on the show, Maxwell? You don't even know Maxwell. who he is. You don't even know. You just grabbed a toy. You don't even know Maxwell. what toy that is. Maxwell. Huh? Maxwell. Lexwell. Lexwell. He's a white. He's a white mean. Okay. Boy. He's an X Men, and his name is Beast. Beast. Yeah, that's Beast from the X Men. Beast. Hank McCoy. That's the Beast. Okay, that's not the camera. Down there. Up there is the camera. Okay. See? There you go. That's the Beast. I'm playing with me. He was also in uh, that zombie movie, that zombie romance movie that I liked. Warm Bodies. Thank you. Warm Bodies. Okay. He was also I'm in Warm Bodies. I'm supposed to uh, kill me or something. Uh, he doesn't really kill people. Well, I want to... He's going... He, you're making him go... Is, is, is... Is he a snake? No. Is he hissing? Is he making bacon? No, he's... And that's the sizzling of the pan. No. Oh, he's flying. Okay, Beast can fly now, apparently. That's exciting. That's just the flying uh, noise. I'm From here, to... it looks like a blue Fonzie. Yeah, it's a blue Fonzie. Hey, that's what the bee says. He goes, puts both his thumbs out and he goes, hey. Okay. Do that, Maxwell. Conquer a mundo. Hey. There you go. There you go. That was good. Correct a mundo. Okay, I am. Uh... Okay, why don't you go and uh, fight a bad guy, Beast? Thank you for being on the show. <laughs> and that is it for this That is it for this week's homework assignment. And I sincerely hope and pray that your eyes, minds, and rectums have all been thoroughly opened. But, aha, you're not getting off that easily. Uh, if you want to get off that easily, you need to buy me dinner first, at least. <laughs> do, not for do not forget next week's homework. For next week, we have a special treat. We have a very special treat for you, okay? Yes. Okay? Okay? Really excited about this. We're going all the way back to our first ever homework assignment, which you may, but almost certainly do not remember, was a bizarre episode of the Long Thing Company show Ultraman. We're doing another Ultraman. We're doing another Ultraman episode. Okay. I'm so freaking this. This episode is up on the YouTubies. It's dubbed in English. It's only the second episode ever of Ultraman in the history of Ultraman. And it's obvious that they hadn't yet figured out what they wanted the show to be because this episode is wildly different from 
all the other episodes in the history of Ultraman. Because one of the characters is, is throughout the entire episode, looks directly at the camera and is talking to you like Japanese blues clues and shit. <laughs> Really weird. Plus, also, one of the characters um, commits mass genocide. Yeah. In a really bizarre way. Yes, Maxwell. A, a third guest. Wow, amazing. That's so cool. Okay, uh, who is the guest today? This is what's going to happen Incredible. if I am going to record the podcast in your room. Hulk. Who is it? The Incredible Hulk. Put it up on the camera there. Uh, excuse me, but that is the headless Hulk. Because he does not have a head. He does not have a head. Okay? It's the headless Hulk. It's the headless Hulk with Thor's hammer. Okay, see? We're playing with toys on YouTube, okay? So I need to have a crazy, insane voice and act like I have cocaine, and then we're going to become millionaires. Basically. <laughs> That's how you do it. Conus2002 does it, and he oh. looks like he's slimy. Hook, pick up forever. <laughs> <laughs>